The centerpiece of this problem is a region R defined by three curves, x equals 1, y equals negative 2x, and y equals x times e to the x squared. And we're going to work with that to find three quantities. One, the area of this region. Then we're going to revolve this region around an axis to get a solid of revolution. And then finally, for good measure, we're going to find the perimeter of the region. Get it? For good measure. All right, let's jump into part A. And this is the sort of information that is going to be useful to us. So, the area of R. Well, area is all about finding the area between curves, and it seems to make sense to handle these curves in the most natural way, namely uh, these infinitesimally thin rectangles that go between this curve up here and this curve down here. Since they're infinitesimally thin, we know that the thickness is the dx, so that tells us what it is that we're integrating with respect to. And since we're integrating with respect to dx, we also know the limits of integration are the x limits, 0 to 1. And we want to make sure, because this is an area calculation, an area involves absolute value, we want to make sure that our heights are always positive. That's why we put this curve in first and then subtract this curve. So we have xe to the x squared minus negative 2x. That, of course, immediately simplifies to the one curve plus the other, plus the 2x. And now we have to evaluate this. It's not a calculator question, so we're going to need to do these integrals. <clears throat> and so let's write it like this. Let's say 0 to 1 x e to the x squared dx. Let's call that a and then we'll add um, 0 to 1, 2x dx. And we'll call that b. So a, we're going to handle with a u substitution. You might be tempted to think this is integration by parts, but you notice that this piece here when you differentiate it, it's going to cancel out this piece. And so we're going to write 0 to 1 x e to the x squared dx. Our u substitution is going to be u equals x squared. Therefore, du dx is 2x. And so finally, we have that dx can be written as du over 2x. So we can rewrite this entire thing as x e to the u. And in place of dx, we're going to write du over 2x. Those x's cancel. This is from x equals 0 to 1. How can we further simplify? Well, e to the u du, we know how to do that integral. That's just e to the u, so we'll just substitute back in that this is 1 half e to the x squared evaluated from 0 up to 1. And that's going to give us 1 half e. Now we have b to calculate. 
and that is a simpler integral. That is going to be the integral of 2x dx is just going to be, I'm sorry, I didn't finish this. This is 1 half e when we evaluated at 1 minus 1 half. Because when we evaluate e to the x squared at 0, we get a half. Okay, back to b. This is going to be x squared uh, from 0 to 1. And that's just going to be 1. So area sub r equals... We said it was a plus b, and that's going to be um, e plus 1 over 2. I've just simplified. I've just combined this with this. That's our result. OK, let's take a look at part b. Now, the nice thing about part b is they only ask us to set up a solid of revolution volume calculation. I've tried to visualize this a little better. And what we see is that this is in fact a volume of revolution where we have an inner part that's carved out, so-called washer problem. We treat these maybe a little differently than uh, your textbook. We treat these as two separate integrals a solid volume working with the outer radius and then we subtract off the part that's carved out on the inside. We keep them as two separate integrals to avoid the common mistake that students make of writing r outer minus r inner the quantity squared. But that's really just an aside. So we know that this is going to be a volume. Let's see, let's say part b. Okay. Now the volume is going to be an integral because we're going to use the disk method it's going to be pi times something squared and then we're going to subtract off another integral that's going to be pi times something else squared. How do we fill this in? Well the key to orientation in this problem is that we're revolving around the axis y equals negative 2. That y equals negative 2, if you think about it, it's right up here. Right through there. It goes right through that intersection point. Okay. And so the disks are going to be perpendicular to that. Therefore, the thickness of the disks the infinitesimal thickness of the disks will be dx. So that tells us what it is that we're integrating with respect to. That helps us determine that the limits of integration are these x limits, 0 to 1. And finally, that the functions that we use to compute our outer and our inner have to be functions of x. So here's our outer. It extends from y equals negative 2 up to the edge of this curve. Okay. And that's going to just be x e to the x squared minus, what's that curve? That lower curve is negative 2. It's this uh, axis of revolution. x e to the x squared minus negative 2. Now this one, our inner, is going to be this distance as a function of x. And that's just going to be negative 2x minus negative 2. So I suppose we could write this just a little more neatly. I wouldn't do this if it were the actual exam. I'd just leave it in this 
non-simplified form, but I'll just write it one more time as x e to the x squared plus 2, the quantity squared, minus negative 2x plus 2, that quantity squared. And we leave it in that form. That's all they ask for. OK, it's time for part C. Again, I've tried to draw this ahead of time just to make it easier to delineate what we're working on. So here's C. We're looking for the perimeter. Well, the perimeter has a few different components. We'll call this part uh, C. We'll call this whole side from here to here. We'll call that D. And we'll call this whole side E. Okay. So we'll say that the perimeter equals C plus D plus E. Uh, what's the easiest one of these to calculate? Well, why don't we work in uh, reverse, sort of reverse order? D is probably the easiest thing to calculate. D is just this height. The height below the axis is 1. The height above the axis is E. So we've got 1 plus E. What about this diagonal? Well, it's the hypotenuse of this triangle. And so E is just the square root of a 1 squared plus 2 squared, or the square root of 5. And finally, the last piece, that's a length of curve calculation. <clears throat> and so what we have there is we use that standard form of length of curve since the function is expressed in terms of x, so we're going to go 0 to 1 square root of 1 plus dy dx, the quantity squared, dx. Now, we'll probably actually have to explicitly write out what dy dx is. I think they want us to show that. dy dx, well, that's the derivative with respect to x of x e to the x squared. And to calculate this properly, we need to use the chain rule, or rather the product rule. So we'll take the derivative of the first. The derivative of the first is 1, the derivative of the x, times e to the x squared. And then this one, we're going to have to take the derivative of e to the x squared. Well, that's going to be e to the x squared. But by the chain rule, we have to multiply by 2x and then times the first term, x. I suppose I will simplify it, not because I would do this on the exam, but just so you can check your answers or compare answers, and I've got 2x squared e to the x squared. So, again, if you were actually working this integral through to its conclusion, which they don't require you to do, this expression that we've just gotten is what we would substitute back in here and square. Hope that helps.